Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if I could ask you to stare in my direction. I'm one of that small proportion of the population who actually likes to say that to groups of people. Uh, my name is Julie McCrossan and it's my enormous pleasure uh, to welcome you to the sixth annual National Borderline Personality Disorder Conference, the second time here in Sydney. Can you clap yourselves? We're here and we're starting on time. <laughs> and, and it's, of course, uh, Borderline Personality Disorder Awareness Week. And I guess one of the things that I want to do just before we begin, and, uh, and I invite Donna Ingram, our, our local Radri elder, to formally uh, welcome us here, uh, is to encourage you to get onto Twitter. Hand up if you're a Twitter person. <laughs> I, I put it to you, and I, I'm honestly not joking, the single most important thing Julie will aim to achieve today, other than getting lots of audience questions and comments, keeping everything to time and uh, learning so that I can spread awareness about the services that are needed to give everybody access to the services that can achieve recovery for people uh, who've had a borderline personality disorder diagnosis. Apart from those fundamental things is we have to get awareness and Twitter is uh, so simple. Find a person, it may be a younger person, it may be an older person, in your community, your uh, community organisation, your workplace, your whatever group you're involved with. In fact, I I hand up if there are people who do tweet. Look at these people and ask them for help during morning tea and lunch. Um, I, I just very quickly, I have only been involved in Twitter for about uh, 18 months. I have certain passions, uh, many of them to do with health. And I now have uh, over 2,200 regular uh, followers. They're with me all the time and it is growing and that shows sustainability. A very quick example of what can it achieve other than awareness. Uh, I'm a uh, person who three and a half years ago had head and neck cancer. I only mention it in that not unlike the challenges for people living with BPD, there's very, very little public awareness and insufficient specialist services. And I have, through this mad tweeting activity, made links in New Zealand and the United Kingdom. Uh, I am now aware of, in, uh, of consumer and carer conferences uh, in different parts of the world. Uh, they're going to invite me, I'm going to invite them. You can do amazing connections with people of passion and relevant experience, as well as just raising general awareness. I don't have shares in Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I just think yesterday is so much about learning but also raising awareness. Let's make an effort. Uh, so, if you are onto Twitter, hashtag OZ, that's Oz Australia, hashtag OZBPD, hashtag OZBPD. And if you're into Facebook, hand up if you're into Facebook because that'll be much more common. And I'll give you this later, but it's Australian BPD Foundation. Australian BPD Foundation. So we know what to do to like it and to uh, get active on posting on it. And let's post about today. Uh, 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 that's what I would recommend. Could I also just say before we begin that we are being filmed today. I'm a great believer in uh, questions and comments from the floor. But if you prefer not to be filmed, uh, please uh, give me a question in writing. That's most welcome. Or just come and see me during the morning tea break and um, say I prefer not to be filmed and I'll talk to Mark on camera and we won't film you. Uh, we were going to just not film the audience, but in my experience as a, a television and radio broadcaster of many years, many people often appreciate the opportunity to have a voice. And, and this material will be edited and, again, used to make, raise awareness of uh, the issues of people living with BPD and how to achieve uh, happy and sustainable recovery. So... Let me just uh, again welcome you to our conference, Achieving Recovery Together, uh, presented today by the Australian BPD Foundation in partnership with Mental Health Carers New South Wales, uh, that many of us uh, used to know as ARAFME, the Association for Relatives and Friends of the Mentally Ill, but the new name, Mental Health Carers New South Wales. A big, big thank you to our platinum sponsor, Project Air, and we'll hear about their work, our gold sponsor, Spectrum Personality Disorder Service for Victoria and our silver sponsor, SANE Australia. Uh, a big thank you to our great friend of the Australian BPD Foundation, Origin, the National Centre for Excellence in Youth Mental Health, uh, I think based in Melbourne. Help me if I'm correct, Victorians, yes. Uh, 
And I also want to thank Fish Fine Music for notepads and door prizes, uh, the Royal Australian New Zealand College of Psychiatry for the program, and Tandem for gifts for the presenter. Angelica, where's Angelica? She is my beautiful assistant. Will you give her a round of applause? And after speakers speak, she'll hurtle forward and give them a gift. Uh, and uh, uh, I'd also like to thank Mental Health Carers New South Wales who've donated the all-important Lucky Door Prizes. So I've got your number in here. If you don't have one, don't worry. There's another opportunity in Morning Tea to get a number. We have a number of marvellous books, incredible music and red wine to close. I'll give you more information later. But essentially, at the very beginning of the next session... I'm going to pull two lucky door prizes at exactly the starting time. It is a gross behaviour management system. <laughs> because if you're not here, what is it? Redraw. Redraw. A second chance at life. Okay. Do you now feel prepped? Well, I think I've told you all the key things. Bathrooms are up and to the left. Uh, the women's, you go left, hit the wall, and then go to the right. Um, I, I also would like to tell you about uh, an opportunity to obtain this remarkable painting that is behind us. Could you just hold that microphone so that I can talk into it? He's now become a beautiful assistant. You never remain silent when you're an MC. You just keep filling to time. Thank you. Um, I, I want to let you know that this remarkable original painting is available on silent auction. It's two fighting stallions against a crashing surf. It is generously donated by Tani. Uh, it, it illustrates the release of pent-up emotions. Uh, Tani has been enabled to uh, sustain a sense of being grounded and focused through her artwork and uh, while living with BPD. And she has kindly donated this uh, for silent auction bidding. If you go just near the registration desk adjacent to it, Bob at the Australian BPD Foundation table, there will be a silent auction sheet there uh, and payment can be taken in any form whatsoever. Direct debit, cheque, PayPal, uh, cash or just even shekels, whatever you've got. But no, seriously, this is a, a marvellous original artwork that goes to the heart of some of the challenges but also uh, the essence of recovery and the release of pent-up emotion in a way that is safe for the person involved and offers a creative outlet to the community. So please be involved in the silent auction. While you're there at the Australian BPD Foundation desk, there is free membership registration just for today in the foundation. So uh, please take uh, that opportunity. Just one last thing to tell you before I uh, begin the conference with Donna, and that is there is a chill out room. It's in the Great Orex room. If you go out, hit the wall and turn to the right, you'll see greater X over the door. And this is obviously a place where people can relax. Uh, uh, um, Audra will be in the chill-out room uh, offering debriefing opportunities if anybody would like to uh, talk to somebody at any point during the day. Uh, people wearing purple stickers can uh, direct you to this room. And you can chat there with a peer support worker or a trained mental health person or you can just enjoy chilling out. And so that's the debriefing in the chill-out room or just chilling out in the chill-out room in the Greater X room. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after all of that introduction, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Donna Ingram. Now, Donna is a Wiradjuri elder and a cultural representative in the local Aboriginal community, the mother of four, the grandmother of one, uh, and involved in multiple... Aboriginal organisations, but the thing that is just too thrilling for words. Okay, I will acknowledge we have people from the Shire who are dressed as sharks up the back. This is the rugby league for the people who've come from Victoria, and they wave if you're from the Shire. Your life has been fulfilled. But as well as that exciting thing, in Redfern was the Aboriginal Koori knockout. I'll let Donna tell you about it, but it is a major rugby league gathering. Uh, of Aboriginal people, and it was a triumph for the Red Fern, Red Fern All Blacks and a triumph for Red Fern and the Leichhardt Oval. So a round of applause and welcome for Donna Ingram. Thanks, Julie. Um, yeah, I wasn't really going to mention that, but, um, yeah, so I was part of the organising committee for the New South Wales Aboriginal Rugby League football knockout that we have every year. So we had over 
63 men's teams, 20 women's teams, and then about 30 or 40 uh, 17s and under. So um, Redfern All Blacks won the competition last year, so when you win, you get to host it next year. So we actually took out the men's and the women's again this year. So, um, yeah, very exciting. So thanks, Julie. <laughs> so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be here today to offer you welcome to country for the sixth National Borderline Personality Disorder Conference. It gives me pride to represent my community in this important cultural protocol. It shows respect for and recognition to the unique position of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in Australian culture and history. We are gathered on the traditional land of the Gadigal, who were one of 29 clans of the Eora Nation, which is bordered by the Hawkesbury, the Georges and the Nepean Rivers. I'm an Aboriginal woman who proudly identifies with the Wiradjuri Nation through my family connections from a town called Cowra in central west New South Wales. I was born on Gadigal land and I've had the privilege to live, work and raise my four children on this land for most of my life. As Julia mentioned, my family has recently grown to include my new granddaughter, Aaliyah, who is nine months, three weeks and three days old today. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal, their spirits and ancestors who will always remain with the land Mother Earth and thank them for their ongoing custodianship and for allowing us to gather here today for this important conference. I'm also very proud to be part of the oldest living culture in the world, the Aboriginal culture of Australia, with our unique and distinct heritage, cultures and identities. I pay my respects to our elders, both past and present, and realise the sacrifices made by our leaders to create a better future for Aboriginal people. I do this as a reminder and as a tribute to elders and those who have gone before us to fight for land rights, justice and equity for our communities. Aboriginal people have suffered greatly due to past racist government policies and practices. This has led to severe mental health and drug and alcohol issues in our communities. This in turn has led to us, having, to us as having some of the worst statistics around suicide in the world. I'm proud to be part of the National Empowerment Project that aims to reduce distress and suicide in Aboriginal communities. Don't have time to talk about that now, but please visit the NEP website if you'd like more information about suicide in our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. I'd also like to extend my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people from all clans and nations who are present this morning. I recognise our non-Aboriginal sisters and brothers who walk beside us to provide care, support and advocacy for those who are living with BPD. I now offer you a warm and sincere welcome to the land of the Gadigal of the Eora Nation. Wish you a safe stay on the land and safe travel from the land. On behalf of my community and the Gadigal, I wish you a productive and enjoyable conference with interesting speakers and important networking opportunities to further support the work you do in reducing stigma and raising awareness of this often misunderstood condition. In closing, we remember that this is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you. Have a fantastic day. I, I, just before I let Donna go, I, I just thought I'd just ask her for a couple of the approaches they took at the uh, Aboriginal Koori Knockout uh, about safety. So tell us how you approach things like alcohol, tobacco, and you know those things that are, can be such a challenge for your community. Yeah, well, I remember the days when we actually sold alcohol at the knockout and it just makes me cringe. Um, these days, um, for the last over 10 years, it's been totally alcohol free. And in the last four, five, six years, it's becoming smoke free. So there's strong health messages. They do um, look after those people that like to have a cigarette and they had designated areas. Um, but generally, it's a smoke free area to, yeah, push that health message very strongly. And, and has it changed the atmosphere, that approach? Um, oh, well, definitely in regards to alcohol because we've got 63 teams from across New South Wales coming together. Some of them might not get on so well, you know, throw a bit of alcohol in there. It could, could go really badly, but, um, you know, football's a tough sport, so they, they have their little skirmishes anyway, so... Um. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's very family-friendly, isn't it? There's tons of kids. Yeah, we call it, you know, one of the biggest robberies in New South Wales and, 
there's, it's about the football, of course, but it's about families that coming together. And we've been talking about how, for some people, it's their annual holiday. You save up accommodation, travel. Um, you know, these small country towns are very passionate about their football team, so it's it's catching up, and yeah, it's a really great atmosphere. The reason I, I raised it uh, with Donna is that my understanding from another conference I did is that when it comes to life expectancy, people with significant mental health issues uh, have a similar life expectancy to many Indigenous communities, and for many people, sp consider that smoking is critical in that that reality, and and. There's a lot of work happening in your community around smoking, isn't there? A lot of work. There's a lot of, um, you know, really well-funded programs and um, employees going around talking to people about, you know, the benefits of giving up smoking and trying to encourage them, you know. That it's one thing to say, quit smoking, but you need a lot of support. So there, there's a lot of funding that's gone into that. And it's one of the health services, uh, Wellington Aboriginal Corporation Health Service, were one of our big sponsors and that was mainly around, around that reducing um, tobacco rates. Brilliant, Matt. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Donna, please.